Hello, Chart Watchers, and welcome to Market Watchers Live with Aaron Swenlin and Tom Boley. I'm your host, Aaron Swenlin, and actually Tom Boley is not with us today. He is traveling for the holidays. He's getting back home, so I know we should see him tomorrow morning. But I do have Greg Schnell here today, so uh, we'll have a great show. Today's show is being recorded, so you should be able to play back any or all of Market Watchers live at your leisure. If you're unable to attend the show live, you can now go to www.stockcharts.com slash webinars and follow the link to the Market Watchers live playback. And there you can get to the show. We also archive our shows and you can find older programs on our YouTube channel or on uh, our Facebook page. During today's show, please feel free to submit ticker symbol requests, questions, and comments using the chat window next to the video player. Later in today's show, Greg is going to provide me stock symbols from your questions, and I'll use your requests in the 10 and 10 segment at 1250 Eastern Standard, where I'll attempt to annotate 10 stocks in 10 minutes, although I think we're going to change this a little. I'm going to annotate five stocks in five minutes, and Greg is going to annotate Tate five stocks in five minutes. Well, we're gonna we're gonna give it a, uh, the old college try, as they say. Market Watchers Live now airs on Monday through Friday from noon to 1:30 p.m. Eastern. If you want to be part of the show, you can reach us via our chat room or via Twitter. Our Twitter handle is at MKT Watchers Live. That's at MKT Watchers Live. As you leave the show today, we'd love to hear your feedback. In the lower right portion of your screen, you should see a how do we do section with a link to a one question survey. And there you can let us know what you think of the program and anything we can do to improve. For those of you joining us for the first time today, welcome to the show. And for, your, for our regulars, welcome back. So, uh, Greg, a very interesting holiday weekend for some of us. Uh, I know I spent the entire, and I'm not joking, people who were here Wednesday, I was, uh, I actually had the flu when I did the show, but I, I survived. And after that, the, the rest of the weekend was a blur. I was uh, basically in bed with tissues and football, and I don't even know what all, because it just went by in a blur. I was so sick, but I'm almost like new now. So I guess that's one benefit of the flu. So how are you doing, Greg? I'm doing great. No flu here other than my <laughs> Calgary Stampeders lost the Grey Cup in Canada. So that's creating a bit of uh, flu for me, but that's about the closest I get. Yeah. Oh, that's not too bad. Not too bad. Are you ready to uh, take on the, the show with us today and, and fill Tom Boley's shoes? Well, those are unfillable, but I will... Uh... I will do my best to kind of cover off the stuff that I know. I'm a little different time frame than Tom, but uh, yeah, that'll be great. Yeah, it's going to work out. So for those of you who aren't that familiar with uh, the show, Tom is a very, very short-term trader. Uh, I am a mm, short to intermediate term trader, and Greg sort of got the same uh, time period that I do. So the show will be a little bit more a little less short term than normal since we don't have Tom here, but I don't think uh, any of you are going to be um, left out. Uh, we're still doing our Monday setups. And in fact, let me go ahead and go through the agenda and our upcoming schedule so we can really get this show on the road. So uh, Wednesday, Julius is going to be back to talk to us about RRG charting. So you don't want to miss that. Uh, so come on in Wednesday. And if you, if you can't make it, be sure and check out those uh, Live, the playbacks on Facebook or on YouTube. Friday, Tom, as I said, will be back tomorrow, but Friday he's going to be doing a workshop. We don't know exactly what the uh, content will be, but of course, I'm sure it'll be outstanding as it always is. Saturday, our Chart Watchers newsletter is released. So if you haven't signed up yet to be on that uh, email list, you're going to want to do that before Saturday for sure. Today's agenda. So I'm going to do market updates on the half hour. Uh, we're going to skip the middle one today, but uh, right now we're going to start into the Monday setups very shortly. Uh, we have somebody here, Grayson uh, from Stock Charts. He's got a special announcement for us. And Greg, since I have him here, uh, we have to talk commodities. So Greg's going to talk some com commodities with us. Uh, 10 and 10 to 1, like I said, I'm going to take five. Greg's going to take five. I've got a DP report for you. Uh, Carl wrote some really interesting um, commentary in the Decision Point blog, and I wanted to go over that a little bit with everybody. And then finally, we'll 
uh, we're going to do a look at Cyber Monday stocks. We figure, well, it's Cyber Monday. We might as well uh, take a look at some of those retail symbols. And I know Greg's been grabbing a couple of those to look at. And then we'll finish up with our uh, mailbag questions from the room and wrap it up from there. And with that, I'm going to go right into our first market update. And here we go. I think I can get that. Because I know how to do this. There we are. Okay, candle glance. Here we go. Sorry for that delay. All right. Uh, interesting day. You know, we had a look at the Dow. We had this amazing rally to start the day, and then it's just tumbled back down. Uh, but we haven't really hit much in the way of negative territory, and we are resuming a rally again for the Dow. Uh, but we can see on the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ, the, the recent decline has taken price uh, into the negative. And we can see S&P 500 is attempting to get back to the positive, but currently it is down uh, 83 cents. Uh, and we could see that uh, the NASDAQ has also had that uh, really bad decline, but it is trying to, to take back some of those losses. Russell 2000, small caps really getting hit hard, not even able to uh, turn it back around just yet. We can see with the Wilshire 5000, similar to the S&P 500, big drop, um, but a move to try and get back to positive territory. Treasury yields down slightly at 2333. UUP is now on the positive side of things. It's actually unchanged at this point, but we can see it spent the majority of the morning uh, down, but now we're starting to hit positive territory a little bit here. Uh, commodities are lower. You can see with oil, USO, we got a gap down. Um, hit a low for the day. Looks like we may, may be recovering at this point, but USO is at 1160. GLD, gold, gapped up. And uh, took a tumble, but has moved right back up to close to where it was at the intraday highs. But it is pulling back yet again. You can see the VIX is at 991. Uh, I know if I'm going to go to the front page right now. I'm going to show you what's important about that VIX. When we look at the predefined alerts, notice on Friday, the VIX actually hit a four-year low. So we're really flirting with some very, very low readings on the VIX. And of course, that typically means that we're looking at uh, some complacency or certainly bullishness in the market, which isn't a big surprise. And that will complete our first market update. Uh, with that, though, I do want to go ahead and look at some of um, the big movers here on the Dow and the S&P 500. So our most active, GE, Micron, and AMD. And what I found interesting, I know we've been talking about, uh, I think I, I read a report about um, yesterday. Again, things are kind of blurry still when I was so sick. But, um, you know, the Fed's talking about raising rates next year. And the thought is that the financials are going to do uh, better. So I'm going to show you currently what we're looking at as far as where the financials are sitting. Here we go. Yeah, that's all I want. Okay. Forgive me, I have to turn the mic down to cough now and then. Not completely better. All right, so at this point, we can see utilities are leading as far as today is concerned, and energy is getting hit uh, hardest. And I know, Greg, we had quite a few uh, questions already in the chat box about uh, energy. So I'm going to look at uh, just the financial sector really quick here in XLF. And then I'm going to hand it to you if you wanted to take a quick peek at uh, energy. And then I'll be getting my Monday setups ready while you do a little bit of uh, discussion there, if that's all right. Sure. It's so like, oh, wake up, wake up. No. <laughs> I'm just looking at XLF. I was, uh, if you could pull up XLE when I'm done with this and uh, we'll pass it along. But, uh, you know, I think at this point, the financials are looking pretty good. I'm a little bit concerned, though, because what, what I'm seeing right now in XLF is a possible head and shoulders here that has formed uh, the neckline being down here just below that uh, $26 range. So we'll have to see. It's not a head and shoulders until it actually executes. We'd need to see a drop below that $26 um, area. And then we would expect to move about the height of the pattern, which would put us about 
you know, right here, I would say at uh, support around this uh, March, February, March high. So, you know, the head and shoulders doesn't look good. Um, but the talks talk out of the Fed has been giving some uh, positivity to the to the sector. So interestingly, um, you know, when I ran my scan for the Monday setups today, I ended up with a lot of the financial stocks. And I think actually the ones I picked, I think all of them, I think, have something to do with the, the financial space just because that's what came up in the scan. So I think it's interesting that I'm getting all of these uh, high momentum moves for financials. Yet, uh, I'm not seeing the best uh, chart set up at, the po- at this moment in time. You know, the PMO is still uh, moving lower. I mean, the good news is it might be getting a little bit oversold here. But that's uh, my concern a little bit about financials. But I'm going to go ahead and get my uh, 10 ready, my, or my Monday setup ready. And I'm just going to pass the screen back to you while I go uh, fiddle with that. Okay. I'm about to grab it. And... That's probably not what we were expecting. So let's go to this one. That looks a little (laughs) better. Okay. And uh, what we've got here is XLE. And let's pull it. Whoops. Pickle instead. That's probably not (laughs) what we wanted. Okay. There we go. Um, So this is my typical chart template. And what I like to keep track of is relative strength and also obviously the scooter. But one of the issues we're having on XLE this morning, um, it's pulling back and we have an OPEC meeting coming up this week, uh, November 30th. So I think that's Thursday. Um, But the, the big issue here is, and we could either use the annotate tool, which would be this one down here, or we could just draw a horizontal line. But the reason I like this 66 and a quarter or 67 even, so let's just draw a horizontal line on there. You can click on here. Just put in $67 and solid color is red. And we're just going to put this. But what you see is this head and shoulders top forming over here on the right um, with energy. And this chart has a 200-day moving average. A lot of the commodities like to operate above the 50-day moving average, and it's a pretty um, good place to look at. So the issue that we have here is that we were starting to rally back up, and I thought we might actually push back through here. But it might be time to put an option on here to help hold your positions in energy. And the main reason uh, that I'm a little bit uh, concerned about this is that I I feel like the U.S. dollar still hasn't Uh, given us any divergence. And so one of the issues I have is if oil is going to enter a long-term bull, it should do that. Now, um, so XLE sitting right here on this $67 level, uh, it's a pretty important place to see support. It was resistance over here, became support in here, and then came down, tested this level, and then had trouble getting back through it. Then it got through it. So this 67 level is pretty important. And I don't like you know, the lower high on the right side, MACD just going below zero is we kind of make this right shoulder. Now, this is a very short term pattern. I like to think a little longer. Uh, So if I look at XLE, uh, the blue line is a 10 week moving average. So this line and the green line is the 40 week moving average. And if I just zoom in here, you know, this is you know, an important area going all the way back on the charts here, $66. So um, not to belabor the point but this has you know for for three years now it's been a a pretty important place on the charts and so i think what we really need to pay attention to here is can this hold up now i think the market is going to end up short of supply and i think we're going to end up getting a lot more pushed out a lot of the big projects are no longer on the books um and, and there's a lot of people that think that the move to cars is going to happen immediately and overnight. But the big issue is we don't have enough copper in the world to recopperfy um, every house with 220 volt wiring in the garage to plug in your Tesla charger. And we don't have enough <laughs> um, networks in place at every gas station. So you've got charging capabilities. Uh, so there's an entire build out of North America that would have to happen for us to rapidly move to electric vehicles in any sort of time frame and without copper and nobody wanting to approve a copper mine it's going to be awfully difficult to kind of make that happen quickly Hmm. xop is right at the 10-week moving average Um, and so what we see here is rising uh, lows obviously and rising highs so we're in an uptrend 
the the bigger issue is we're sitting right on that 10 week moving average and we'd like to see that hold just traditionally when that doesn't hold it's usually weeks of pain um so that's a pretty important level on the chart now again we've got the opec meeting this week I still want to be long energy. I think we're at the base of a three-year run. And so I think energy is going to be a great place to hold. But if you're a short-term market timer, you might, you know, maybe last week was your selling week and this week you want to continue to to lighten up. But um, this MACD right at zero is at a pretty critical level. So if it rolled over here, this is quite a bearish implication. If it actually just paused here and then started to take off to the upside, you really want to be on board. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I like the energy um, area. I still think it's a good place to be. But uh, more importantly, I think if if you're a really short term trader, uh, then you want to use um, some options or something to protect your position or you want to put, um, you know, just just clean your position out if we go below the 50 day moving average. But usually the 50 is a nice place to enter. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's kind of how I treat XOP right. and XLE. Awesome. All right. I went ahead and I, I put together my uh, Monday setup. So I'm going to go ahead and switch that over. There we go. All right. So this is my, my group. And I guess the first thing uh, we usually do is see how uh, each person, person did with their uh, setup picks. So I'm going to go ahead and put in, I had MTH. And it was up. I know that much. I'm going to put the intraday chart here. Intraday. All right, man. When I checked earlier, I was I had a, I had a bit more here. I had 51.35 as the last, but uh, right now we're reading at 51.20. Yeah. I, I have, whoop. hello. I'm still here. Okay, good. Wow, that that was weird. Okay, uh, so I was if we had done it on Friday, it was really nice, but we did have a bit of a decline uh, coming into today on uh, MTH, but I got it in at $50.35 last, and it's at uh, $51.20 now. So we were up uh, slightly there. And let's look at Tom's, he had GWW. Same deal, let's make it an intraday chart. All right. Wow, well he had, it got kind of, he'd had a really great, start and then really bad on the pullback but he got in in at 198.29 so ultimately um the last right now is at 201.54 so he he did all right as well i didn't calculate the uh, percentages here but um let's see i think overall i think he ended up coming out uh, just a wee bit ahead of me but the good news is is both of them were were quote unquote winners for the week so at least we did pick ones that that went up which is always is always great. Uh, let's see. So I'm going to go ahead and take you. So I ran my scan, and this is the scan I run for all of my Monday setups. And I'm not going to go through it completely with you. If you want this scan, you want to copy and paste it into your own uh, scanning workbench and do whatever you wish with it. Uh, I do have the link to my scan at the very bottom of all of the Market Watchers live recap uh, blog entries. So if you go to our blog, you can get this scan and you can um, you know, copy and paste it and get, get your own there. Uh, so when I ran it, I'm gonna just run it really quickly so you can see what came up. I actually had 42, actually it was 44 when I ran it earlier today. And I'm, wanted to show you as far as sector if you recall there is a great deal of the financials in here and i found the other one that had a a large grouping was industrials so right now my scan is pulling up as far as the you know new uh, momentum shift swings there's a lot in the financial space and a lot in the industrial space but let me go to what i actually ended up doing here okay I want to go back. Well, I'm just here. We go. Scan results. Uh, let me go back. Well, here's my my thing. Let's go to Monday setups, and I still have some of my old ones in here. So uh, I actually haven't picked yet. So as I go through these, I'll I'll figure out which one I'm going to use as my actual choice. So uh, global payments GPN was one that came up. I like the the 
the fact that you can see that the PMO bottoms are rising, which is always nice. That's a nice uh, confirmation here with the price bottoms rising. My only concern here is I am kind of close to overhead resistance, um, but getting that PMO buy signal and seeing that momentum is moving higher, I think this is still a pretty nice looking pick. I don't think I would pick this for my pick of the week though. Uh, HB Fuller was the other one, F-U-L. And I like this because it looks like a lot of accumulation is coming in here. Look at all that nice volume on this rise. We're getting the pullback, which is fine. The PMO is uh, already made a positive crossover. Gotta like that. And again, look at that OBV based on the fact that we are looking at that huge uh, amount of accumulation that we got earlier. I like the pullback. So I'm leaning on this one as my weekly pick. I think you could even make a case for a possible flag forming there. I, the main thing is, is we're getting that little pullback, which I like. Par is the other one I had. Par Pacific Holdings. Ah, yes, that's right. This one looked really good too. Uh, so I have the PMO just about ready for a buy signal. Uh, I like the way that the OBV has started to rise here. Would have liked to seen, um, you know, get a little bit higher than the previous top, but you know, we have a lot of uh, we have a lot of room to get up to to make that to get price up to the previous price top itself. So scooter's still looking really healthy. Um, and again, this area of support is now getting held nicely. Uh, great. It looks to me like a really good springboard to to move up to that 2150 area. So okay, so I'm leaning toward this one now. And finally, Raymond James Financial was the other one. Ah, yes, I remember this one as well, but I'm not going to pick it. Uh, I liked, uh, again, you could look at this as a as possible flag formation. It's easy to see here in the thumbnail. Uh, I like the fact that the PMO is rising. It's getting ready to have that crossover. Uh, OBV is in line with, with the move, but um, I, I still think I like the, I think I like PAR the best. So I think I'm going to go with that one, but I will have these four in the... Uh, Market Watchers live chart list. I'll get these uploaded for you uh, later today. And then you can decide which one you might be interested in or, or just can leave them all alone, whatever you, you feel is best. But I'm going to go as far as my first Monday setup. I think I'm going to go with PAR. So let me pull that one up one more time. And we'll get a price check here. $20.40 for P-A-R-R. And I'm going to put you on the spot, Greg. We're going to, he's going to have to compete off of your knowledge for this week. <laughs> <laughs> so whatever you pick for him, we'll, we'll have to see. Okay. Uh, do you want me to take the screen now? Yep. Go for it. Okay. And I love that picture. Yeah. <laughs> Bag party. You know, hanging out in the bunker. Um, okay, so the one I like the most is Shopify. Um, so this would be my pick. This is the weekly chart. And I, I like this sideways consolidation. And I think we're ready. We just started to make new highs. Let's zoom in on the daily. Uh, but this chart looks to me, we just started to make another higher high here. I like this breakout above 109. And I would expect this to move quite a bit higher. Um, after consolidated roughly since May, um, it's been moving sideways. We had a nice push up and then came back down to test support. So I like the fact that that's all holding up. So if I was to put one in Tom's name, it would be Shopify. Mm -hmm. um, that's probably the, the strongest one for me. Um, if I was to pick, look at a couple of others, I like Franco Nevada. Um, this stock looks to me like it's ready to kind of pop to new highs. This is gold. Um, for those that have been following the Commodities Countdown blog, I'm a little bit bullish on gold. Uh, <laughs> and I'll explain all that when I get into the commodity segment. But the, the big thing that um, is important here is we are at such an important inflection point on all of the currencies, um, which would make the case for a big bull market in commodities if if it goes the way I think it's going to go. Um, it, if it doesn't go, it's right now and all our stops would be relatively close. So we could uh, quickly analyze that. But I think the biggest case for me is that um, the, the currencies are all set up for a ripping turn here. So uh, if I'm right, the US dollar falls, the rest of the 
currencies rise. Um, and I have about 15 things that's making me lean bullish on commodities and a and negative on the US dollar. Um, now the real question is, is does it all play out the way um, technical analysis would expect it to? And again, like Carl uh, Swenlin likes to say, technical analysis is a windsock, not a crystal ball. Uh, but we do have a lot of things setting up that are very, very bullish for the commodities. Um, Again, I don't trade week to week. So um, I'm looking for a big picture 2018 to be um, significantly bullish on all of the commodity fronts. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, if I think this is probably the best place, but I just want to get into one chart and, and talk specifically about it if I could just now, because I don't have, it's not part of my commodities world, but um, I'm just going to go to IBB. Yeah. Uh, and cover this off because I think it needs five minutes today or two minutes today. But <laughs> this is the chart with IBB. And what we see here is this horizontal support and resistance at 300. And then we see this head, left shoulder, head, and now kind of trying to form the right shoulder. And you can see we've tested the 200 day moving average. And it looks to me like this is an important place on the chart. Now, it could turn and go higher, head and shoulders patterns if they don't break, this is an excellent place to get on board. But I do have another chart that makes me want to be more careful here than bullish. Um, if we go to, sorry, um, if we go to uh, a list that I've shown people uh, on the commodity countdown quite a bit, um, I have this one chart that I like to point out. And what it does is it just takes 10 stocks, or sorry, 10 one stock against all the other sectors and you can um, look at it. So the point I want to make is if we just look at IBB and, and we could, uh, well, why don't we go in and just quickly annotate, but the, the point I want to make on these charts is that um, when you change the ticker symbol at the top, it will change all of the appropriate stocks below. So you can, um, with an extra account, you get five um, ticker symbols per, per price panel. Um, so you would need to set this up twice, but in the pro account, you can set up 10 at once. Um, so if you were thinking of upgrading today's the day, cause Grayson's got a sale going for us. Um, but you can see that this uptrend is just trying to hold here. And if we look horizontally in relative strength, um, the, the that's that same level, that 300, that's a pretty important level for us. So this uptrend is trying to hold, but if we look on these charts here, so this is compared to the XLY, consumer discretionary, this is compared to XLF, and as we work our way lower, what you'll notice is that we're, you know, this is new five month lows in relative strength. This is new almost one year lows compared to the XLF. This is down in the bottom corner, so five month lows. This is sitting here against technology at new one year lows, not a surprise with how strong technology's been. But looking at XLB, we're, you know, very close to snapping down hard here. So this is nine month lows. And, you know, compared to consumer staples, um, starting to underperform for the last two months. So you could have drawn a trend line here and that trend line is broken. So we're seeing a lot of relative strength trend lines break. Now, um, it's not over till it's over. But the bottom line is, is that six out of these 10 sectors are living in or nine sectors are living in the bottom corner of the chart. And we're breaking down hard. So if you own uh, biotech stocks in general, you want to be very careful here because the setup is, I'll call it either very bullish that it bounces off support and gets going, or you're at the last call and this is the real time to head home. So um, an important place on the chart, and I think, uh, you know, technically setting it up, just noticing this big underperformance against every other sector um, is kind of a critical place to watch on the chart. Now, we've had these dips before and then it takes off to the upside, but I think you want to draw relative strength lines on all of these charts. And just when you see them starting to break to new one year lows, that's just not bullish. And so what happens is if you're a, an institutional money manager trying to outperform the market, if you're in something that's falling compared to every other sector, you're obviously going to underperform. And so it's an important place on the chart from a, a mapping perspective, what are institutional investors going to do? And if this thing continues to fall, they're going to be lightening up, right? So uh, the chart is sitting right at the 200 day moving average. And 
you know, there's a reason that it held before. Um, if it doesn't hold this time, I think you want to be very wary of the potential for trend change. And that 300 level is probably a pretty important place to take note of. All right. You know, you're filling in for Tom beautifully because he has been waving the flag of biotechs <laughs> continually. So and since the only problem I is, is he doesn't over. like it when, when, when I get cautious on biotechs because he's very, very bullish. Mm -hmm. um, I have one more chart on that I want to cover off if we have time. Do we have time? Of course. Of course. Um, Okay, we have a couple of minutes. Okay, TLT, and the reason I want to cover it off is because it's setting up with a right shoulder on a right shoulder uh, in the really big picture. Mm. So um, it, this is a, let's just shorten this chart to six months. And this is the perspective I want you to see. So here's the left shoulder, here's the head, and here's the right shoulder. And so this is a pretty important place because we're right at the same level as the head or as the shoulder on the left side. The time frame is about the same roughly two months later. So we've got a pretty symmetrical head and shoulders here. But the real problem is we're starting to get overlapping waves on the right hand side here. Mm -hmm. And so if this was to roll over, obviously, this would be kind of the day to pay attention to it. And if this was to roll over and start falling, what we also notice here is we have lower momentum on each one of these highs. So this is textbook definition of a head and shoulder setup that might fail. Um, so I, I think it's pretty important to pick a level 126 or 125.50. I don't think you want to make it too tight, but you want to give it room to move. Um, but if it starts to break down here at all, I don't think you want to wait for this neckline to snap. Um, this is a, a really critical place on the chart. Now, if we roll that out to a big picture, um, if, if we just draw a line, call it 115, um, don't have to be too fussy on this sport. Um, mm -hmm. Horizontal line drawn in here at 115. Uh, you can see left shoulder, head, and right roughly symmetrical in time. Um, you can see a high peak, a lower peak on the high, and now just barely getting above zero. Now this MACD is turning up and it's trying to work its way higher. But if this would fail here, this is a pretty important clue that um, bonds would be starting to sell off and that we would um, expect money to move out of bonds and into something else, probably the stock market, but I would think more likely inflationary stuff, so commodities. Um, but the, the big thing here is that this little head and shoulders that we see on the right hand side and the big head and shoulders that we see in the big picture suggests, you know, paying attention to the, the profile that is setting up here. And again, this base goes back almost eight years now um, where we're, we're uh, sitting up here. This was resistance on the way. And so if this was actually the final top, um, a pretty important place. Now we can also do it with the underscore. And when you do it with the underscore, it takes out the effective dividends. And so, um, you know, the setup isn't quite the same, but what you do see is that this resistance level is pretty important going back in time. And we want to be aware of just the underlying capital um, in the in this bond market is a pretty important place to be aware of. So uh, I don't know where else to put it in the show, but I think just because the chart is setting everything up on the right hand shoulder right now, it's an important place for everybody over the next month to just really watch how, T how TLT starts to perform. We can also see a big long-term uptrend here that's ready to um, get tested. Um, if we just took off all of the other indicators, clear all and make this chart relatively big. Let's get rid of the dividend uh, lines so they're not there. We'll get rid of the moving averages and then let's just uh, update it and then annotate the chart. And I think the important perspective here obviously is that it, whoops, is that if this started to fail, um, we want to be aware of the difference. So I'll come here. I did something wrong. <laughs> Okay, um, let me just try that again. Trend line. What did I do? No, I don't know. For some reason, it's not lining up with my cursor. But the bottom line, I'm. I think you could see from here is that we're um, roughly. Uh, not quite covering off or we're very close to breaking this major multi-year uptrend on TLT. And if it was going to start to fail, this would be a time to get out of the party. So, um, 
everything sets up for us to pay attention to this big move. And I don't, uh, you know, I don't particularly want to be involved um, in the bond market if it was going to start to break down. So with all of that said, I think it's a, a really critical point um, to be aware of how, <laughs> yes, how everything is set up to key around this end of year. And it's, it's not uncommon, like in January of 2015, look at this kind of cliff down. Um, when these things do start to break, they actually move quite rapidly. These bond market guys kind of like to sell things. So um, anyway, be aware of all of that setup. And with that, I'll, I'll uh, let us get on with the next segment. All right. Oh, there was a question in here saying that aren't head and shoulders uh, shorter time frames and, um, no, <laughs> there, there are a bunch of different time frames. So yeah, the word fractal, um, is what we use to describe that, but head and shoulders can appear on multiple time frames. And even if you go back and look at big bases that were built in the market or tops that are built in the market, they can happen over months. They can happen over years. Um, some people think energy built a long-term head and shoulders top. Um, so there's, the, you can always use, um, basically what a head and shoulders means is you're making a lower high on the right hand side. So you've been making a series of higher highs and higher lows. You make a lower low. Now you're making a lower high. So it's time to pay attention. If support doesn't hold, then, you know, your top structure is in and everybody who bought up in here would be um, underwater. So they all want to sell. So the moment it gets back up to to the bottom of the area that they're involved in, they, they kind of want to sell. So that's what you start to see with these people who had um, bought in late here. Um, as this market tries to rise and they start to get scared, they start to sell and say, okay, I'll take a small loss rather than um, letting this thing get away from me. And so you end up creating the right shoulder by the selling and this overlapping wave structure isn't really that bullish. So you can see over here on the right hand side where we got overlapping wave structure and then all of a sudden it just kind of let go. Yeah. All right. Well, I think uh, we do need to bring in Grayson from Stock Charts because I know we do have an announcement to make. Yeah. Good morning, guys. How's it yeah. going? Good morning. Great. Good to see you or good to, uh, good to hear you, I guess. Happy, uh, happy Cyber Monday. Yes. Getting my fingers all ready to go do my shopping. Yeah. So um, what I wanted to come on and talk about today is that we've got a couple exciting things to share with you on the topic of Cyber Monday. So hopefully everyone can see my screen here. Um, what I've got up at the top of my dashboard is a notification that most of you should have. This is the Cyber Monday sale notification. What we're doing for Cyber Monday here today, uh, sort of a special deal that we only run once a year. Uh, really our best deal of the year. It's three free months when you sign up for a 12-month subscription. So this is this goes for new subscriptions. This goes for renewals of existing accounts. If you're a current member and you love stock charts, you want to add another 12 months to your account, you want to renew your account for another 12 months, we're going to throw in three free months for you. So renew for 12 months, you actually get 15 months of stock chart service. Or if you are a current free trial user, you've been trying out the, the, the product, trying out the service and you like it, you want to renew for 12 months, uh, sort of lock that in for 12 months. We're also going to throw in those free months for you, three free months. So you're going to, you're going to get 15 months of stock chart service if you renew today uh, for a 12 month subscription. So the way this is sort of working, we did email people last night. We've been sending out some emails some messages, things like that. But we've also got these banners in a few different places around the site. So if you're a member or if you're currently a free trial user, you should see this blue banner here that I'm highlighting up at the top of the page. If you click on that button right in there, save now, you'll be, uh, you'll be jumped to the, the Cyber Monday special page. Uh, and you can, you can sort of follow that form through there to, uh, to take advantage of the Cyber Monday special. So really, this is the best day of the year. I mean, if you, if you love stock charts, you want to be a member, this is the day to renew your account. Uh, or sign up for a new account if you're currently in a free trial. Now I say if you're currently in a free trial because if you are not currently a Stock Charts member or you're not trying the free trial or anything like that, uh, this this special is really reserved exclusively for members. So if you're interested at all in in taking advantage of the special, maybe you've been thinking about signing up for Stock Charts, you can do that. Uh, what you'll need to do first is actually sign up for the free trial. 
you'll go through that process and then you'll get this this banner on your on your uh, your pages and you can use that to sign up for the special so on top of that we've got something else in store for you i uh, had a little pun there if you catch it <laughs> we've got a sale going on in the stock charts bookstore so we're actually taking 25 percent off of everything in the stock charts bookstore uh, for those of you who don't know we do have what we call the stock charts store we sell books dvds all great curated content we sort of look at it as curated content from you know the top authors that we love uh, folks like john murphy and martin pring it's really full of the educational material that we think here at stock charts is just the best um so you know john murphy's books is a, those are a great example uh, we love those books. We think that they're incredibly value, valuable for uh, for all technicians, anyone interested in charting. So we sell those in the stock chart store. So for today only, we're taking 25% off of all purchases in the stock chart st uh, store with the one exception uh, of chart packs. We are, we are not discounting chart packs, but that's a, a small exception. So to get to the stock chart store, you can actually go to the bottom of any of our web pages. If you scroll down the page and you look at the footer over here on the right side under more resources, you'll see a link for the stock chart store. You click that and we've got this, uh, this sort of banner up here at the top. Use the code CYBERMUN25 when you check out. Uh, add anything to your cart, use that code and you'll get 25% off of everything uh, in your order for today. So. Lots of, uh, lots of good stuff happening for Cyber Monday. Pretty exciting. Um, definitely, the, like I said, the, you know, the best day to subscribe. If, you, uh, if you're a committed Stock Charts user, <clears throat> you want to keep using the, uh, the service in the, in the future, this is absolutely the best day to subscribe uh, with those three free months. So hopefully everyone takes advantage of that. Exciting. And Grayson, that, the three-month sale part of it is only for today, right? It is. So this is one day only. This is expiring tonight. It's just Cyber Monday. It's sort of like a like a flash sale. Um, you're going to sign up for those 12 months. You, you prepay everything up front um, and you get those three free months added to your account. Um, so one other thing to note, too, this is for all service levels. This is for basic, extra and pro. This is not limited to any specific service level. So it's just a 12 month renewal of any account. Uh, it does only apply to service, though. So as, as most of you should know, um, service is actually separate from data. If you want to add real-time data to your Stock Trades account, that's an option. You have the, uh, you have the option to do that. But this, uh, the sale is only for Stock Trades service. So all of our, our features and tools and access to everything, that's all included in, in Stock Trades service with the three different levels, basic, extra, and pro. So um, all three of those. Sign up for 12 months, you get three free months of whichever service level you choose. It sounds amazing. Yeah, it's a big day. It's a big day. And do you have to be a member to get the book store, book store discount? That you do not. That's a great question, actually. So if you are not a member, maybe you're getting, getting into technical analysis, getting into charting, anything like that, um, you do not have to be a member to sign up for or to, to take advantage of that, uh, that stock chart store special. Um, just visit the stock chart store, like I said, you know, use the, uh, the link at the bottom of any of our pages. You can buy anything in the stock chart store uh, and get 25% off, even if you're not a stock charts member. So, um, yeah, really, uh, really exciting stuff. A lot of, a lot of specials, definitely the, the day to take advantage of it. Indeed. Well, thank you for coming out, uh, coming all the way down from, uh, what was it upstairs? <laughs> yeah. From, uh, from the other end of the office. Yeah. <laughs> Appreciate it. <laughs> All right. Well, you know, we're all, we've got um, some time, Greg. I know you. We still want to hear your commodities, uh, so I think we'll probably just start the ten and ten uh, more at one than at ten minutes too. We'll see how it goes. But I wanted to make sure you had plenty of time to go over some of your commodity stuff. Okay, maybe I'll grab that right now and uh, share the screen. Um, so the big thing that I want to point out on commodities, I think, uh, so I, I posted quite a bit in the commodities countdown blog and there's, a there's an ETF or sorry, there's a, uh, uh, entire webinar that's dedicated to commodities countdown once a week. Um, and, and the big thing about that is if you just go into the stock charts blogs and go to commodities countdown, I try to post a link here every week. But the, the important thing about the commodities right now is the currency. And so um, the, 
I just briefly need to show you the currency chart to make you understand the, the situation in the commodities. And what we want to get to is the US dollar here. And, and the point being that on the US dollar, um, I'm, I'm going to open it to 20 years and then I'm going to bring it back to this shorter time frame. And what we see here is that um, back in the uh, late 90s, we had the US dollar outperforming everything and we had a brief dip on the Asian financial crisis where it gave us a bear market signal and then resumed the bull market uptrend. Um, but for the most part, this period going back a little on the left of the screen here was six years. And then we got a bear market signal and that bear market signal was a pretty good clue that things were changing. And emerging markets started to outperform and the term brick was coined. Um, all of that stuff happened right in around here. What we have now is on the other end here, we have gone six years without a bear market signal and now we have a bear market signal. So this suggests to me that the US dollar got weaker recently than it's been in six years. And the odds are that we're probably... Um, we're probably headed into a new bear market cycle, especially after six years of a bull market. And then you get this major signal and it wasn't a brief dip down for a day or two. It was almost three months was spent below the 40 level. So for the RSI, that's pretty oversold. Now let's just zoom back in on that shorter time frame just go to seven years for now. And the point here is that with this situation, what we would expect is that the R is that the, the dollar, the US dollar has trouble getting back above this 40 week moving average, or in this case, I've used a 65 week moving average. It's um, 65 week moving average is uh, an important uh, five week or sorry, five quarter moving average um, on a weekly chart. And then so five, three month periods. And then on a daily chart, a 65 uh, period moving average is exactly one quarter of a year. Um, so uh, 65 trading days in a year. So 65 trading days out of the 258 makes it one quarter of the year. Um, with that, what you can see is we've just touched the 50 here and now we're starting to oscillate. So this is a pretty important place. Let's say that the US dollar started to bounce off this 40 level, then my commitment level is um, really being checked hard. But the point I wanna make is the MACD has also given us a similar signal that the uh, momentum carried over to the weakest reading in six years, um, even more than six years. So even past when we started our, our final bear market bounce where the RSI was down here, we're weaker than that level. Um, so we've got this big giant uptrend in the US dollar that meets over here around 89. And so we have a little gray area in here that we want to be respectful of, but you can also see that this is expanding highs and lower lows. And usually that indecision, um, that, that signals indecision and usually that indecision is an important place uh, to just be aware that the trend might be changing. So even though we made a new high in the US dollar on the 1st of January, quite frankly, it was on a lot lower momentum and now we're really showing a very low momentum. So what we would expect just if we open this chart up one more time to, to stare at the MACD, um, what you'll see is when the MACD goes negative, it's a pretty important place to be aware of. And so this was the bull market period we had back in here. We dropped down and made significant new lows and that kind of changed the trend. So we, we have that same thing. Now, uh, for everybody who might remember the bull market in commodities, if we just put the CRB on this chart in behind, and I like to use gold better, but I'll be fair and just use all of the commodities. Um, what we see here is the CRB in behind so we want to put it behind the price. We're going to use a different color. So we're just going to take a solid line, make it whatever blue for commodities and hit update. And what we're going to see is that the moment the US dollar topped out, commodities started to rock. The moment the US dollar bottomed, commodities started to fall. This was also the financial crisis. So can't really use that too much. But look at 2011. Here, US dollar bottom makes its final low and commodities top out. And now I think if we're entering a new bear market, we're gonna see this commodities trend rip to the upside as the US dollar falls. So that's my thesis is the US dollar. But if, if you go on the commodities countdown uh, webinar, you'll see that I talk about the Euro, the yen, um, there's a whole bunch of things going on there. So in a big backdrop, if we just look at the Canadian stock market, which is typically commodity based, 
um, what we see is that the Canadian stock market has just recently broken out to new highs which would be consistent with a new bull market in commodities. And you can see back in 2002 when Canada started to run here, this was a bit of a commodity run all the way into 08. You'll remember the U.S. stock market topped in 07. The commodities market went on in 08. So the TSX was making new highs while the U.S. market was down about here. Uh, so it was quite a rollover. So the, the commodities, as you can see, it tracks Canada pretty good, not step for step, but for the most part, the highs and lows match up. And right now, if the commodities were to start to turn higher, I think we could expect a lot more. If I go to the Australian market, um, just to emphasize the point, this is basically commodities for Asia. They've recently just broken out to a new eight-year high. And so seeing all of these start to turn simultaneously um, makes me a little more bullish. And if we go look at Brazil, which is a major commodity, BVSP, I think it is, um, what you'll see here on this is it's broken out to a new 10-year high as well. It hasn't quite taken out this one, I think. Uh, actually, no, it's taken them all out. So it's at new all-time highs and has recently pulled back a little bit. Momentum was a little frothy. Um, so maybe you, you end up getting dips down. But again, we would expect this to find support around the 40 level. And you can see this new bull market trend has pretty much, um, you know, came off the lows, went up and touched the highs. When it touches up here around 70, we want to get long and or we want to be aware of the trend change. And as we're talking about in the U.S. dollar in the opposite context. Um, as long as it holds above 40, you want to consider yourself to be in a strong bull market. So I, I like the setup here because everything's aligning. The only thing I don't have, and I would like it a little bit more, and that's just um, something as big as the US dollar usually requires a momentum change. And the one thing we don't have on the MACD uh, for the US dollar is any divergence on this recent high. So what we would have liked was that the momentum on this high was lower than the momentum on the previous high. And that's just on a daily chart. We'd like to see that kind of small softness. So back here in 2017, we saw this head and shoulder structure in momentum where you start to make the lower right shoulder and break this uptrend line. Notice that the high was in here the final high was on lower momentum and that really started our decline. So for those that were following the commodities countdown, I think we nailed that one pretty straight on. The big issue we have here is we don't have that lower high yet. And on something as big as the US dollar, I would expect it. So on this low, you can see um, as the market came down here, we had a higher low in momentum. So that's one of the only concerns that's not setting up for me yet is this momentum reading doesn't have to happen but usually you would like to see it happen and you can you know we didn't have any divergence here and we just kept making lower highs and lower lows and lower highs and lower lows it was pretty continuous um, record and then this change in trend where we actually made a higher low was a pretty important place on the chart so for people who are interested in bigger picture, not day to day, but bigger picture trading, um, one of the big perspectives I have for 2018 is the setup in commodities. Now, if we look at um, charts like emerging markets, they typically are bullish when commodities are bullish. We're having a week Monday. It's not uncommon that one day a week you have selling and it's not uncommon that Monday is the one day of the week. And I think if Tom was on the air today, he'd tell us seasonality. This is the weakest two weeks of the month. Right. So <laughs> I get all that and all that kind of stuff. So for day traders, this might not be your entry point. But um, for the big picture people that are looking to catch up trends like this, I think we're just underway. And you can see the emerging markets are doing very, very well. And again, this whole rise starts right as the US dollar tops and as this thing takes off. So emerging markets, anything priced in US dollars is going to perform a lot better. But I think the big clue for me is not just that, you know, if we picked up EWC, which is the Canadian ETF in US dollars, so uh, listed on the US side of the, the market and it's showing this breakout to new highs too. But not only are we doing it in US dollars, just on the weakness of the dollar, we're also doing it in Canadian dollars, in Aussie dollars, in yen. Um, so in Germany is breaking out. So we, we've got a lot of stock markets going higher. I would say um, the big thing to pay attention to on all of these, uh, you know, we've spent almost seven weeks up here um, 
at near new highs. And so today to take a day off and everybody's gasping because commodities are lower or whatever, I, I fully am aware of the short-term trading cycle. Um, the big point I want to make is I don't think you want to get shaken out. Um, if you're a longer-term trader, I think you want to try and hold these trades. So maybe put an option position if you're a little worried about the leverage in oil or the speculator interest on the commodities um, commitment of traders report, all that kind of stuff. Use, use options to try and help you hold your position. Um, but I think the one thing, you know, I don't like it when XOP and XLE go back below the 50 day moving average. That's not a very bullish sign for me. Normally there were, there was one question and I'll just answer it quickly on the, um, uh, it, it was a question in the chat here. And one of the questions was Greg metals aren't behaving very well. And then there was a second question, Greg, why do you like metals near the end of the month? And so I'm just going to bring up GDX. And you can go back and do this math yourself, but roughly I like to trade and it's not every month. So you have to wait for your setups. But the one thing that I noticed on most months was that around the 25th of the month, you got a low and a rally into about the eighth of the month and then a low and a rally into the eighth of the month. Now it might keep rallying, um, but it was usually the eighth of the month was a good place to take off. Well, on September, that was our final high. Now we've come down. Um, last month, you know, we made a low um, in November and haven't done anything since. But today we're trying to push back above this wandering 200-day moving average on GDX. And if the market continues to hold here, and again, one day doesn't make a trade for me, but um, what I'm looking for mostly is that the ratio between GDX and GLD starts to hold up. And, and take off. And if I'm right on that, um, then what we would like to see, I'm just going to zoom in a little bit here. Um, what we would like to see is this base has been trying to hold in terms of a ratio. We have a downtrend line here. If we just use solid line instead of watching all the wiggles, because that's um, on a ratio chart, it doesn't really work as well. So here's your solid line. And if we started to annotate this, um, put this on the chart. I did it wrong. Um, okay, so we've got a line here. So this would be the big trend. Um, there's also another one that just says we've broken the short term downtrend, which is this trend. And so normally I like to get on board when it breaks this downtrend. And you can see that there's another one here. And, you know, again, the 25th of the month, trying to buy the rally to the eighth of the month or whatever. Um, 21st of the month was the place here. And then you try to buy this rally to the eighth of the month. So, it, and again, it's not every month. It's about 70% of the time that you get a nice rally, maybe 60% of the time. Again, what I like is that this has been base building for almost a month. You can see back here, maybe it needs a little bit more time, but some of the top gold stocks like Franklin, Nevada that I pointed out earlier are starting to, you know, test all time highs, even though gold hasn't broken out. So, or not all time highs, but um, new 52 week highs. So all of those things set up to me to say the currencies are so important to watch right here. The commodities are so important to watch right here. But if we're right on the long-term trend of the U S dollar, and I gave you, you know, different reasons to look at it, but the yen, the Canadian dollar, the euro, um, are all giving us bull market signals, the Australian dollar, um, the Australian stock market, the Canadian stock market, the Japanese stock market, the emerging markets are all breaking to new highs, which would all suggest there is a trend change in place away from the US dollar. And that leads me to want to be more bullish on the big picture in commodities overall. That includes oil, even though it might pull back and again, maybe use options to hold your position. But um, I, I think you want to try, if if you have a five-year horizon or a three-year horizon, I think you really want to make sure that you're well positioned in copper, in gold, in oil, in um, cobalt for for electric vehicles in all of those things. And it's probably better to own stuff that's already built than trying to wait for mines to get approved because not many mines are getting approved, especially in the uh, Western world. So with that, I'll leave it for commodities, but that's the reason I'm so bullish. Um, and again, where would I be wrong? Well, if the U S dollar started to reverse and, and uh, rip the other way, that would, that would, um, uh, 
be a pause for me. But um, again, I haven't seen the negative divergence, which I would have liked to have seen. Uh, you don't always get the chart setting up perfectly, but quite frankly, I like what I am seeing on every other front. All right. Excellent. Thank you so much for that update. I'm going to go ahead and do uh, our final market update and you can get yourself ready. I'm going to, I've already got the first stock symbol for the 10 and 10. Okay. For those of you who just joined, I'm going to do five and Greg's, Greg's going to do five. So I have my very first one ready to go after the market update. So I'm going to go, I'll, I'll head right into that, but let's first get into our final market update. All right. Looking at our candle glance, we can see that, uh, as I noted, the, the Dow, you know, we had these great moves up for most of the major indexes and then a, a very deep decline uh, shortly after 11. But we can see that with the Dow, it's managed to stay in the positive. So industrials are still looking pretty good. Uh, S&P 500 is still in the negative after that drop around 11. We can see the NASDAQ is also still in the negative at this point. We've got the Russell 2000 small caps. We didn't get the kind of rally we saw out of some of the earlier moves, especially on the Dow, on the Russell 2000. But we did get a small rally, but it, since then, you know, it dropped with everybody else at, uh, just before 11. But since then, it has been consolidating sideways um, at the intraday lows. So we'll have to see if that uh, small caps can hang on and not lose much more by the end of the day. Treasury yields are uh, mostly unchanged, down slightly, 23.35. UUP dollar is up right now. We did spend most of the morning in the negative for UUP, but we have managed to get back into the positive. You can see commodities are lower with oil gapping down, hit an intraday low, but it does seem to be coming off of that. And we may get back up at least to where the gap down was on the open. And we can see with gold, it is moving mostly sideways now, had a nice gap up, uh, pulled back, but uh, is now just pretty much trending sideways here. And we're currently reading at 123 for GLD. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and get right started into our 10 and 10. And the first symbol that we had was uh, Seabridge Gold. I got this from a recent email to our market watchers at stockcharts.com email address. And since we had Greg here, I figured I'd, I'd pull up a gold stock. I know you just talked about a lot, but um, I'm looking at Seabridge Gold. So that's going to be the first one. And what I noted, was I always, of course, immediately get in there and put in my support resistance lines and that's right there that auto support resistance that's where you're going to get these lovely resistance and support lines one of the things i noticed and i know um you know right now looking at this we're at a really important level of support i would say for seabridge gold sa and my only concern right now is this uh reverse flag with a pennant on it that could be a problem um but you know, we're holding that support. So by breaking down below that support, it would execute a reverse flag. And so that would that would indicate we'd get a move at least down to that 950 area because the length of that flagpole is pretty tall. So I think that I'm not saying that we're definitely gonna get that breakdown, but if we see that break below, that's what I would expect would be uh, for SA Seabridge Gold to, to tumble to that 950 level. At a, at a minimum. And you can see with the PMO, it's not that negative. Yes, it's moving down. Yes, there's a, a great deal of margin between it and its signal line, but it is now in that um, you know, near-term oversold territory. You can see in the thumbnail that it wants to start to decelerate just a little bit here as we're starting this area of um, consolidation. So I think there's some, some uh, possibilities here, but I would really be watching that that area of support. If we get a breakdown below that, I certainly wouldn't want to be uh, holding it or in it. So that would be the first one. And can you give me a, a symbol now, Greg? What, what one did you like? No, um, WDC was an important one today. Okay. Oops, not easy. W, yeah. There we go. Get into the annotate function. I'm going to get better at this. All right, so again, auto support resistance. You can really see a, a 
a major consolidation zone here. I mean, the price has been pretty much staying right within within this zone. Big gap down. Uh, yeah, big day for WDC. And look what that did to the PMO. When you get a drop below, you know, a huge drop, we're looking at a 6.5% drop currently, you're going to see the PMO just get yanked in whatever direction it's going. Um, what I'd be really watching here, and I, I like the fact that you're, you're still seeing this OBV moving higher. I'm sure by the end of the day, once this um, volume comes in on the negative, we're going to get a drop pretty low. But I, I don't see it as a big giant problem right here. So I am looking at this. We've got to get that drop down to that support level. This is a pretty deep drop. I wouldn't want to be bottom fishing right now for this. I would want to wait for us to, to see it hit some support here right around that $82 level. I think that could be the promise. Uh, we'll want to look at that point. You'd want to re-look at the PMO and see whether that configuration still looks positive. But you can see, you know, before this, this uh, deep drop, you know, we had a nice rising trend and the PMO was going with that trend. There weren't any negative divergences. So uh, I think that we probably are looking at another trip down to the bottom of this zone and, um, and then a move back up. But I don't think I'd be trying to scoop it up just yet. Okay, and how about Intel? Okay, oops, hang on. I'm gonna do the thing here. Okay, and let's see. INTC. Yep, I'm actually starting to get these down. <laughs> okay, let's get to the annotate function. All right. Oh, really? Okay. I know, I think I've, I talked about Intel. I think I wrote about a, a parabolic uh, that I saw in, in motion here. Was it Micron? I don't remember which one, but you can see uh, that that's kind of what we saw here. And now we're getting that breakdown out of that parabolic. And typically when you do that, you're going to get a, a move all the way down to where uh, it was basing before that. So in, honest, in all honesty, I mean, you could make a case for a drop all the way back down here to that 37, 38 level, but I'm not at all looking at that. So what I am looking at is this gap in there. And you can see we've the 20 day EMA has now just been punctured. Uh, the PMO is on a sell signal. I think I'd be watching this one because we know it's a strong company and we know that, you know, it's not, we're not going to likely get um, a, a huge tanked you know, volatile move that's going to just kill us here. So I, I think it's still a strong stock. The best best thing is, is, you know, we are in this little decline here and we just punctured that 20. But if we can get down here to that that um, gap support and make a turn back up, uh, the PMO probably by that point will be in a good spot for that turn. Look at the, I mean, the scooter still looks pretty darn good. So at this point, I would be looking for a move down to that gap support. I'd I'm going to make a mark here just to show that it did break down below the, the 20 here. So that's interesting to note. All right. Pop that in. Make this number three, three I think. Mm -hmm. And then maybe we'll just stay on some of the semiconductors because they're all at interesting places on the charts. But there's WDC. It's not really semis, but... Um, yeah, we did that. And then uh, now I've got Intel. So that was number three. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Um, AMD was another one that was ringing the bell. Yes. Online. A lot. Of, yeah, a lot of these are, are similar. Wow, that's pretty interesting formations going on here. All right. Okay, so of course, uh, again, like I said, I always want to get the support resistance. I'm kind of looking back in here. Can see some here and look at that ends up it, it's really um and again i know i bring greg morris up a lot but he talks about the importance of these support resistance lines because it's memory people remember what they bought something for people remember what they sold it for and so those levels do tend to um match up a lot and and in this case you can see that with this support resistance line so right now we're getting ready to to hit back up and try and get above that 20-day ema you know we we drop below it on that gap down, really difficult. But look at the PMO. It's starting to make a move upward. We've got the buy signal. It's come in oversold territory. 
you know, the OBV, eh, you know, it's moving mostly sideways. I'm not seeing any, uh, you know, terrible negative divergences or anything there. And the scooter is trying to make a move back up. So I think that all looks very positive. But I, I'm a little bit, let me draw this. I, I wanted to see this uh, formation here because it did, it just had that feel of the symmetrical triangle. And these are typically continuation patterns. I mean, it could be um, signaling a continuation to the downside here, but you know, that support level was hit. I, I would still be looking at this zone as, as the trading zone. I like, again, the PMO buy signal tells me there's something on the horizon here. Uh, you know, you've just got that move. We're just getting the puncture above the 20 day. This might be the time to look at it in, in a short term investment, but um, you know, we're sitting in the middle of this zone. So I think it's in a, in a pretty good place. If we can hold a close above that 20 day EMA, I think there's some promise. All right, and that was number four. And one more for me, and then I'm gonna put you uh, on. Let's do CarMax, KMX. Okay. And away we go, interesting. Of course, I say that when I look at any chart. Oh, interesting. Oh, that's fascinating. <laughs> because all of it is to me. <laughs> one of those weird people. It was sad I didn't get to have Thanksgiving dinner with dad. I, I really I really enjoy talking the market with him. And unfortunately, none of us were well enough to go. All well, right, so we hit some pretty important support here. Let's see. And I don't like that scooter though in that decline. So I'm gonna draw some of these trend lines here, put the little arrow on there. And yeah, OBV as well. And look at the PMO. It's not. I'm not seeing much in the way of deceleration yet. But I do think there. It's promising the fact that we've hit this area of support and it is holding it. This is a problem though. The 20 has crossed below the 50-day EMA, so that means we're looking at an intermediate-term trend model neutral signal. Neutral meaning not short and not, you know, obviously on a buy. So you're in cash or fully hedged is the idea behind a neutral signal. So when I say a neutral signal. That's exactly what it is. Uh, so I wouldn't, I certainly wouldn't be looking to buy this. There's nothing in here that tells me that um, I would want to jump in here. I think that this is uh, positive for those that maybe are holding it, but I would, I would be a little bit concerned. I'd be a lot concerned actually, if we can't hold that 200 day move, uh, uh, EMA. So that would be a concern right there. I'd be watching that probably set my stop. Um, below that 200 day EMA, but I'm def this is definitely not something I would be uh, jumping into. That's for sure. All right. Okay. And while you do that, I will put my screen up. And away we go. And then after that, I'll give us a quick, uh, you guys have to rate my stock exchange hotel. Isn't that a great desktop? Yeah, it's anyway, very cute. Uh, okay. So uh, firing away, I think there was one request up there for Synovus. Okay. So I'm going to put that one in. It's an energy stock, so obviously it's down today. Um, very important level of support for Synovus here. And this crest right here was right as they sold the last asset and they didn't get as much as everybody wanted them to get for it. Um, so the stock has been unwinding a little bit. So their debt levels are still higher than than uh, the industry would like. And so this is obviously peeled back, you know, good 20% already. So um, big moves down. Um, I think uh, at this point, that would be uh, the big concern is we're right at support here, nine and a quarter's got a hold. So, and I'll just do this different than Aaron so that uh, people can see there's multiple ways to, to get this done. But here's that horizontal trend line. And, you know, we're, we're breaking the daily close level here. So, Again, that that would be concerning that this isn't holding up. So you either want an option to continue to hold your position or or uh, supports failing because it's also falling back below the 200 day moving average. All right, very good. Let's see. So the next one I have for you, somebody actually asked for you to look specifically at uh, PICK. Pick metals and mining ETF. Wonder okay. Why they had so, you do that? <laughs> uh, so um, you know, 
without question consolidating here for three or four months. Um, I, again, I'm, I'm look at the scooter ranking. It's still up around 75. Um, what I would like to see on this particular stock is just this short term downtrend and momentum, call it a pause. Um, I don't know why this is not lining up for my computer today, but, um, that is that just be that uh, pointer. Yeah. The, yeah, the pointer is probably causing me trouble. Um, so let me do that. Actually, just turn off my pointer for a second and see if that makes my life better. Uh, okay, here's annotate and we'll try, yep, trend line is set. And so what I want to see here is that's better. Um, so as this comes along here, I'd like just like to see the momentum get above this multi-month downtrend. And if that was the case, that would be great. Obviously supports at 3050. Um, so we could just grab the um, auto support and resistance, pump it up here, right in here. That's a pretty important level on the chart for me. So I would need it to hold there. But again, if, if I'm right on the US dollar, and again, I think we might need another month. I don't know if it's a December low or whatever to just finish flushing this out. Um, but I, I think if you're in strong enough stocks, you'll probably find that they hold up while we await the US dollar to, to continue its bearish signal. And once that, once that really starts to conclude, I think we'll get a better answer to that one. So, okay, so pick uh, 10 and 10. All right. Dash um, six. So I think the, the next one we'll do is the uh, Russia ETF, RSX. Okay. Same thing here. This is a US dollar um, priced ETF. Now it's starting to make lower lows and lower highs. Recently made a slightly higher high. These are close only. Um, you know, we could, I could change this chart up here so that it's got candlesticks on it. People might be more comfortable with that. Um, but, you know, what I would suggest here, um, you know, let this finish pulling back and then I'd be looking for an entry long. Um, this momentum line here, uh, OPEC, that OPEC meeting on Thursday would affect Russia quite a bit. Um, Russia has agreed to, they don't, they aren't part of OPEC, but they've agreed to play ball with OPEC to help restore the price stability. Um, so if this starts to break to the upside here, I want to see um, this trend change happen. Um, that, that would be pretty important for me. And obviously uh, a break above this downward momentum, you know, setting up a nice bullish trend once again would be, would be great. So I would let it just finish pulling back and it might be Thursday or Friday with that, um, with that change from OPEC. And, and once we get that number, then we'll probably know. 10 in 10, uh, 007. Let's see. Okay, the next one I have for you is uh, Tech, T-E-C-K. Okay, I love this chart long term. Just um, there's wiggles on it, but I, I mean, it's a major metals and mining company. So they own zinc and they've got coal and they've got, you know, all of those things nobody wants to talk about. But um things that build the economy. So I like this chart a lot. Um, I would be uh, a big buyer. If you can get a pullback down into this level, I think you just want to own it. Um, obviously, there's a little bit of resistance showing up right now. But um, one day in, a, in an uptrend doesn't make a downtrend. So I would, uh, if you get a break above here, I'd be another buyer. And if if you get the chance to buy it down here at support, I'd probably do that too. So um, long term, I think you just uh, these, if, if we're going to buy copper to build out this electric grid, um, this company is going to participate in a big way. So, uh, like the macro, everything about it, um, oh, I was supposed to put that as 10 and 10, uh, <laughs> 10 in 10, 008. Okay. Yeah, actually I think that was nine, but you know, we'll okay. Well, fine. <laughs> very well. No worries. And, and the last one. Uh, ultra clean holdings, U C T T. Okay. Kind of interesting basing. Yeah, that one is. Let's just get a bigger picture on it. I 
always like, I keep my charts at one year, six months. Um, oh, that is cool. Okay. So I don't like the scooter breaking down after a long, long uptrend. Um, yeah. I'm just going to annotate this chart here. So a little bit of support resistance um, here. Big uptrend line here that I think has to hold. Um, if this doesn't hold, I'd be, uh, I'd be uncomfortable. And probably the bigger reason that uh, I don't like it, you can see how the stock was outperforming for a year and it now continues to just underperform gently. As, as, you know, after a month of underperformance, people don't really like it, but you can see it's been underperforming for three months now. So until the underperformance starts to change and this brief blip here would have been encouraging, but um, that's a problem that it, it didn't actually uh, maintain its, its breakout. So I'd be very cautious on this one. Um, I'd have my stop set very close, maybe as close as the 200 day moving average, but I don't think I'd let it get down below 20. All right. So. I think that's our last one. We've got about 10 minutes, so I'm going to swing it right into my decision point report for everyone. Okay. Thank you, Greg, for sharing the 10 and 10 today. That was nice. Sure. It was rough on Wednesday. I had to do all the talking and I was so sick. <laughs> <laughs> it was not easy. All right. But I, we have the best listeners, viewers. You guys were so supportive and I really appreciated that. All right. So I'm actually taking you to the Decision Point blog uh, where Carl uh, wrote the DP Weekly Wrap. And I was just going to show you a few highlights from there, but you you really do want to go and take a look at uh, his blog entries. They're they're very clear, concise, and they cover a lot in, in a very short period of uh, space, <laughs> very short period of time. So looking at the SPY, you know, one of the things we're, we're watching, of course, is the fact that on most of the major indexes, the PMO has started to turn up. We don't have buy signals just yet there, but I suspect if this uh, into the end of the year um, rally continues, which I would expect it will, and that's what Carl expects, we should get that PMO buy signal before uh, the end of the month. Uh, you can see as far as uh, I want to go down to our trend models. Actually, this is a great look at the weekly chart. He's showing us, uh, you know, this was that continuation pattern. This was our, uh, that was like our bear market, really. Uh, and then we've moved back up into another uh, cyclical bull market. The main thing I wanted to point out and that he pointed out is the fact, you know, we had the PMO on the weekly chart had started to turn over. But you can see right now it's now turned back up. So that's good news in the intermediate term. And again, I think that speaks to the fact we will probably be seeing higher prices through uh, to the end of the month. As far as our short term indicators go, uh, you know, they're starting to top a little bit, but there's still a lot of room for them to continue higher. You know, you you will get a little bit of, um, you know, stutter up and down, a little bit of twitching on your way up. So I'm not really too concerned. And in fact, you can see the STOV is still rising. It, it kind of took a little bit of a break here. The other thing that I think is the best news is looking at our intermediate term indicators. Now, he has a lot going on here. You'll want to read exactly what he's talking about, but it's mainly pointing out these tops on these indicators and what typically happens after the top. And then you can watch after these bottoms what then happens. And we're right now at a very important bottom on these indicators. First of all, it's very, very positive to see them turn up above the zero line. That implies there's internal strength. And we're just about ready to get positive crossovers on these particular indicators, which is also very good news for the intermediate term. Because typically when you get these bottoms, you can see they line up with, you finish your correction or your consolidation, and then you head back up. So this is really good news right now for the market. And you know, in conclusion, he's, he has uh, last week was a little bit concerned uh, because there was some weakness in our intermediate term indicators. But now that we're seeing uh, the weekly PMO turn up and we're now seeing these intermediate term indicators turn it, turning up, uh, looking pretty good there. Real quickly on the dollar, I know we've spent a lot of time on dollar gold or oil and bonds because you're here, Greg, so I'm not going to really get too overly uh, into this. And in fact, I want to pull up my own charts for this. 
So here's my TLT chart. And I know you went over, uh, like I said, some of this earlier and definitely that head and shoulders. Uh, I now I'm seeing quite clearly here in the process of developing. And if we don't get price to pop up above that area of resistance and we start moving down, then sure enough, that's exactly what we're looking at. And as you noted, Greg, it's almost a textbook formation. You could even make, uh, you can even see that uh, volume is a little bit higher coming in on that left shoulder. Um, and it's, it's sort of receding right now as we might be forming this uh, right shoulder. So pretty interesting stuff, but I'm still on a buy signal. The PMO is still rising. Um, seeing only a little bit of deceleration seems to be holding uh, this area right now as support. Um, so at this point, I'm not seeing the breakdown uh, ready to happen just based on the indicators, but um, we are in a, in a pretty uh, interesting space here and, and a decision is going to be made. TLT is at a decision point. Uh, either it's going to break down here and we're going to get the exit, uh, not the execution, but the rest of the formation of this head and shoulders, or we're going to just see that breakout continue up and then test some of these highs at 129. Uh, at this point, my indicators are suggesting the, the, the latter that we're going to move higher. So just looking at the indicators, let's see the next one. Uh, let me go. I ahead. do like on that TLT chart, the way you've shaded your volume that works out really nice. So you can see the, uh, moving average trend in the volume. Yes, I have to do that because <laughs> I lose it. <laughs> I lose where it is. Um, but yeah, the, scroll to, down and show people how to set that up. Absolutely. So for, it's down on the very bottom there. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I don't use the the volume um, up here. I use it as an uh, overlay in the back behind price, and then you can choose your op opacity. And that's just at point one, but you know, even if you move it up to like point four, um, you're going to see it a lot better. But it's still it's harder to see those um, the average. So yeah, that's just my preference. And quickly, let's see. Yeah, we're down to the point. I need to start wrapping up here. Uh, we looked at the dollar. I've been pointing out this reverse head and shoulders that clearly busted. Um, I could take this off the chart now. Uh, you know, kind of executed, but we never, it hit that 200 day EMA and just petered out. So uh, I'm, I'm uh, bearish on the dollar still at this point, I would be expecting it to come down uh, to test these lows back here uh, where we had what looked like a head on a reverse head and shoulder. So I did a chart pattern workshop in um, a week or two ago, and you can, you find these patterns, but they don't, Clearly, they don't always execute, even though they look textbook, so to speak. Uh, it, they're a really good heads up, though. So here's uh, gold. And at this point, you know, I've, I'm on a buy signal, a PMO buy signal. Uh, you can see the 20s coming up, wants to get uh, above that 50 so I can get my intermediate term trend model buy signal back for gold. But really, I'm, I'm, I, I don't see much here. I don't. Uh, at this point, I'm really not looking for it to go over 1300 just yet. I think we probably are going to have to come back down and test, um, at least get down and test that 20 day EMA again, uh, which we're very close to doing. The PMO, though, looks really pretty nice. So ultimately, we should get a breakout above 1300. But looking at the chart right now, I'm just, it's just not quite there, in my opinion. Okay. And you've only got about a minute to wrap up. So, oh, well, thank you for that. So I will finish that there. I'm going to go just back to our homepage so you can see what's been going on in the market. And yeah, it's been a great day. I really appreciated you coming on today and, and filling in for Tom. You did a great job, Greg, as always. Thank Everyone you. Loves having you here to talk commodities and energy. So that was uh, lovely. And in conclusion, let me really quickly show you what's going on with our upcoming schedule so that you can see what we're going to be doing. Uh, Wednesday, Julius is going to be here with us. Uh, Friday, Tom's going to be doing a workshop. And Saturday, uh, you don't want to miss it. Chart Watchers is going to be emailed out our Ch Chart Watchers newsletter. You'll want to go to our homepage to the bottom and uh, put your name in the box to get those emails every other month. So uh, it was a great show. 
I hope everybody enjoyed themselves. I know I did. It was kind of fun doing a different uh, 10 and 10. I'm kind of enjoying doing those 10 and 10s. Maybe Tom will let me have, uh, have them uh, a few times a week. That would be sort of fun. Okay, so um, thank you very much again for joining us today, Greg, and everybody else for viewing. Uh, please complete that survey as you exit the show because we really do like to get uh, your feedback and we use your comments and responses to help shape, shape our future shows. We're on five days a week. We could use all of the help we can get as far as what you like, what you don't. Uh, as a reminder, we air Monday through Fridays from noon to 1.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Have a great day, everyone, and happy trading. Mm -hmm.